Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode here on Bully Whispers. Today we will be evaluating Omar Little as a prospective mythological hero, and frankly he may be the only character on the show with the potential to be one. In particular, he showed an interest in Greek mythology. Ares. Greeks called him Ares. Same dude, different name is all. Which will point us in that direction. Now, while Ares won't be involved in this episode, I must take a second to note that the reference to Ares and Mars being the same guy, just a different name, provides a great parallel with Omar in terms of how they are viewed. While they were both the same deity, as a lot of Roman mythology borrows heavily from, if not copies Greek, the two groups viewed him quite differently. The Romans revered him as a symbol of power and conquest, similar to how the neighborhood kids viewed Omar. Yo! My turn to be Omar! While the Greeks didn't like Ares and viewed him as representing the worst aspects of violence, as well as the deterioration of man through the ages, similar to how Bunk viewed Omar. We had us a community. Nobody, no victim who didn't matter. And now all we got is bodies and predatory motherfuckers like you. Same guy, different points of view. Let me know down in the comments if you view Omar like the Romans viewed Mars or like the Greeks viewed Ares. Either way, for the purpose of this episode, the mythological figure that he has the most in common with is Achilles, to the point that a case can be made that the wire, from Omar's point of view, is an Americanized urban Iliad. So in this episode, we will evaluate Omar as a prospective mythological hero by comparing him primarily, though not exclusively, to Achilles. To do so, we will divide Omar's story into two parts, with the first giving us a good look of him as an epic hero in general, and the second, which provides a much deeper look into his actions and dilemmas, as well as the big difference between him and Achilles, and how American culture may play into it. Now before digging in, there are a few things I must address. First, even though we will be focusing on Greek and American culture, I do feel the need to address Robin Hood, since Omar has that sort of feel to him, but this really isn't a good parallel. While Omar is seen and heard giving out some drugs to people, he is hardly giving it all away. His motives are more selfish, as he gives most of the money to Butch for his own safekeeping, which puts him more in line with a Greek hero out for glory. The biggest real connection Omar has with Robin Hood is that they both target unsympathetic victims. Second, the most immediately obvious difference between Omar and a Greek hero, and this is where we first see American culture creep in, is that Omar is not of divine parentage. However, this is understandable considering he lived in 21st century America, after all, you can't go around talking about how your grandfather is God and expect to be taken seriously. The character who would come the closest to having divine parentage within the American context would be Avon, since the United States has always had somewhat of an outlaw culture and his father was a famous gangster. That being said, Avon still doesn't have the same potential for mythological status as Omar, because, as weird as it sounds, he was just a king. In relating this to Greek mythology, there were many kings, most of whom people can't remember because there were so many, but there was only one Achilles. Similarly in The Wire, there are many kings, Avon, Marlo, Prop Joe, and the Greeks, but only one Omar. On top of that, Omar also has two of the other main requirements of an epic hero, seemingly superhuman abilities, and a tragic flaw, which in his case is the same as Achilles, his anger. When it comes to the Iliad, many people think it's the story of the Trojan War, but it's not. It's a story that takes place within the Trojan War. Just like with The Wire, at the start of the Iliad, they had already been fighting for years. Everybody's project's been knowing Omar, you heard? So, what is the Iliad? He's gonna ask us that like we don't know. He's gonna answer his own question. The Iliad tells you exactly what it is in its opening line. It's the story of the rage of Achilles, which is exactly what The Wire is when evaluated from Omar's perspective. When examining Omar's life, we will break it down into two periods. The first, which we will call the Brandon era, encompasses seasons 1 through 3 and provides a decent general overview of Omar as a mythological hero similar to Achilles. But it's in the second era, which we will call the Butchie era, that the true picture of Omar as an epic hero becomes visible. The rage that the opening line of the Iliad was referring to was Achilles' anger over the death of his best friend, possibly lover depending on who you talk to, Patroclus and pretty much the entirety of Omar's actions through the first three seasons are a result of his anger over Brandon's death and his desire to avenge it. Similar to most mythologies, although not really Achilles in particular, he goes on several side missions during his quest, and even runs into the archetypal enemies with respect for each other turned friends who team up on a quest together in Brother Muzon. Oh, I will move slow. 
I ain't tossing nothing. Bow tie. Quick side note, as a Wire fan, I bust out laughing when I started watching Boardwalk Empire and Michael K. Williams' character made his first appearance wearing a bow tie. Anyways, Omar did very well on his quest to avenge Brandon, defeating some of his foes through trickery and others through brute force, so when he and Brother Muzone killed Stringer, Omar had done pretty much all he could considering Avon would soon be in jail and untouchable. At this point were he to be killed, Omar would have what is known as Arate, which on a Mythology 101 level basically means respect, glory, etc., but taken on a deeper level, it means the full realization of your potential or function. Since he would have completed his quest, he would fall right in line with the Greek heroes like Achilles and Heracles, but his story didn't end there. Going into Season 4, or the start of the Butchie era, Omar finds himself restless with no real challenges, and his comment on it, How do you expect to run with the wolves come night? We spend all day spawning with the puppies. Shows that it's not just about the money, it's also about glory. After all, if that was your racket and you could make a good living just sparring with puppies, why even bother running with the wolves? That's why no one will remember your name. It's during this period that, through a series of events, Omar has his Icarus moment and flies too close to the sun. The story of Icarus and his wings made of wax melting when he flew too high is well enough known that the phrase flying too close to the sun is commonly known to mean being overly ambitious, and Omar has this moment when he robs the co-op shipment. This one action put a gigantic target on him, as well as anyone close to him, and even had some real-life parallels as well. From Arnold Rothstein finding it harder to operate after fixing the World Series, to Jimmy Burke saying that the Lufthansa heist ended up being his downfall, people in the underworld often find huge scores to be more of a problem than a benefit. However, in addition to putting a target on everyone, Omar's heist put him in the exact same spot as Achilles to start the Iliad, and this is where we run into the biggest similarity and difference between the two. At the start of the Iliad, like Omar after the heist, Achilles is ready to leave. In his case, it's because he's mad at King Agamemnon for stealing his woman, but the reasons behind it are irrelevant in terms of this discussion. What is relevant is that they are both ready to leave. Now, one of the things that made Achilles different from almost everyone else is that he was born with two fates, and he is aware of this. He knows that he can leave the fight, go home and live a long peaceful life, or he can return to the fight, where he will attain glory, but die shortly thereafter. Initially, like Omar, Achilles was set on leaving the fight, but his anger over the death of Patroclus, like Omar with Butchie, sent him running right back in. Before moving on to the biggest difference between the two, I'd like to take a second to address how the circumstances behind Patroclus' death somewhat mirror the principle behind one of Omar's most famous statements. Patroclus wanted to help his friends in the battle, and Achilles refused to join, but he did let Patroclus borrow his battle gear to go and fight. When the Trojans saw Patroclus, they thought he was Achilles and began fleeing in terror. Now, we're not talking about some innocent, pimply-faced kids plucked out of the countryside and thrown into the front lines here. The Trojans by that point had been fighting in close-range combat for years. These were battle-hardened veterans, but they ran when they thought Achilles was coming. Sometimes you are the nuff, dog. Either way, both Patroclus and Butchie end up being killed, bringing both Achilles and Omar back into the fight, and this is where we get to the biggest difference between the two, which is also the point where American culture comes into play. Unlike Achilles, who completes his quest when he kills Hector, Omar fails in his mission to avenge Butch and only manages to get Savino. He doesn't get the person he was really after, Marlo, who was played by Jamie Hector, thought that was an interesting coincidence, so Omar wouldn't seem to fit the bill for a mythological hero since he failed to realize his potential and function in that regard, but this is where we really see American culture. Obviously, the United States hasn't been around nearly long enough to have a true mythology like older cultures, and while we do have our historical figures, the closest thing we have that really feels like mythological characters are Wild West outlaws, old school gangsters, and entertainers, specifically musicians. Now when it comes to outlaws and gangsters, it's almost impossible for them to truly accomplish their mission so to speak, since so few of them end up like Carlo Gambino, dying at an old age, at home from natural causes, without having spent much time in jail. So for the purposes of this episode, we will focus on musicians, and in the interest of brevity, we will stick to rock and rap. In rock, while we've had many great stars who will go down as historical figures in their genre, very few have the almost mythological feel of a Kurt Cobain. Similarly in rap, 
While we've had many great stars who will go down as historical figures in their genre, very few have the mythological feel of Tupac or Biggie, and a large part of that is specifically because they died before realizing their full potential, like Omar. In these regards, Omar demonstrated similar characteristics and had similar experiences as a typical Greek hero, but in an American context, as well as being involved in a conflict that started before we get to see and continued after we stopped watching. So at this point, I will leave it up to you to tell me whether or not you agree down in the comments. Does Omar have the makings of a mythological hero? And can you see the wire from Omar's perspective as an Americanized urban Iliad? Well, thanks for watching this episode here on Bully Whispers. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.